Feathered serpent. Captain's log, stardate 5097.3. Starfleet reports major military activity in the Klingon sector near Krakur, a planet on the edge of Klingon space. Intelligence indicates that the Klingons are mobilizing a large fleet to search for a renegade who is responsible for a disruption of unknown nature on that planet. Federation sensors have found a faint energy trail leading to the planet Zam-4 in the Digifile system. We have been ordered by Starfleet to track down the source of the energy and discover what happened on Frakul before the Klingon fleet enters Federation space. If we are not successful, the Federation and the Klingon Empire may find themselves at war once again. Captain, a Klingon battle cruiser has entered the system. Open hailing frequencies. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Klingon battlecruiser, you are in Federation space. You must leave immediately. I am Commander Taras of the Nisra. We are in pursuit of a genocidal criminal. We are performing an act of mercy in removing him from your space. Naturally, you will remove your vessel from this system. For your own safety, of course. I think we can take care of ourselves, Taras, which is more than I can say for you, if the Nisra does not leave Federation space at once. You are in direct violation of the Organian Treaty, mister. If you have a problem, have your fleet commander take it up with them. If a Federation criminal were to pass into Klingon space, you'd be saying the same thing to me. If we are not allowed to capture this criminal captain, you may do this for us. We insist that we remain here to monitor the situation, but we will take no action. Provided that you can bring him to us in 12 hours. Agreed. Raising shields. Arming weapons. Save new game. Reflect. Better in standard orbit. Lowering shields, Captain. Disarming weapons. I have pinpointed the source of the energy trail from Hwakur. Assemble a landing party. Unless we find this so-called criminal, we're going to war. Greetings, my children. I can barely imagine that you have come so far. I am Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Did you know the Klingons are looking for you? The Klingons? Amazing. This is the first time one of my missions has produced results so swiftly. Listen, mister. Any missions can... Damn right the results were swift. The Klingons have been raiding colonies looking for you. No, you must be lying. They could not be raiding if they are looking for me. Violence was not the message of any of my missions. I, Quetzalcoatl, preach universal brotherhood and peace. Quetzalcoatl? How fitting you would name yourself after one of the most bloody-handed gods in Earth's history. Bloody-handed? My people love peace. Your followers regularly sacrificed other believers to you after you left, offering you their still-beating hearts. Impossible. You must be lying. And then your followers were destroyed, because when white men arrived on that continent, they were believed to be you in your promised return. Your people perverted your teachings, then were destroyed by it. Foul, lying creatures! My gift was wasted upon you! Be gone! Here we are, not 
the inheritors of the noble Aztec world. What you have said has greatly disturbed me. You should not lie so. You shall remain here until you have learned the error of angering Quetzalcoatl. Save new game. Replace previous. Doesn't seem to want to be grabbed, sir. It just slithers back to its hole. It is logical that an entity that professes to teach peace would render our phasers inoperative. It looks like a Xamphorian pit snake, a rather common species in this region, noted by galactic herpetologists for their quickness. It is not venomous or dangerous to humans. This vine is not likely to support our weight by itself, Captain. You would have to find some way to reinforce it. Nothing to report, Captain. You fail to obtain any... You pick up some rocks from the pile. Nothing happens. The vine will not support you. You fail to obtain you fail to obtain any. Nothing happens. Fascinating. It did appear to knock the vine down near to the point where one of us can reach it. Didn't they have baseball on Vulcan? Show us your fastball, Jim. Baseball? No one plays that anymore. Good try, though, sir. The probability of getting the vine on the second try was only 36.53%. Well done, Captain. Probability? That was a perfect pitch if I ever saw one. All right! We're on our way! Toloxac, priest of Quetzalcoatl. Only one who knows his ways may approach his holy ground. Save new game. Replace previous. All right. Time for some action. Let me show you how we did it at the academy. Uh, Captain, do you realize how 
big this guy is? He looks at you with a... Still inoperative, Captain. Indeed, you know the ways of Quetzalcoatl. But only a man of courage, one who will shed blood, will pass. Self-sacrifice is the noblest quality of humanity. You may go. Beware the monster in the water. You may have my knife to defend yourself. You pick up the beautifully crafted knife. Well, either this Aztec is a real flesh and blood human being, or I'm going to be retired as soon as I get back to the Enterprise. Save me game, reflect. He looks at you with a puzzled expression. He looks at you. I'll give it a try, Captain. Tricorder registers a life form, a large marine creature lurking just below the surface of the water. Jim, there's some kind of an aquatic creature down there. I'll give it a try, Captain. Formation of raw dilithium crystals, Captain. You have one dilithium crystal in raw form. I watched as you worked through the problems I set in your path. You are a valiant, intelligent species. I was particularly impressed by the sacrifice made by Lieutenant Strage. Of course, I gave him back his life. He is now safely aboard your vessel. Please sit down. We have much to discuss. I've had it up to here. One thing first, if you're so peaceful, how come the Aztecs were so violent and aggressive? I tried to teach them the concept of self-sacrifice. It would appear they did not completely understand my teachings. You are clearly not the liars I thought you to be. Were you telling me the truth about my disciples? That they became ruthless savages? The Federation... Absolutely. Your best intentions were changed by the imperfect humans that you left in charge after you departed. Such is the way of our race, I'm afraid. I sense truth in this. 
Perhaps this is what happened to my children on the Klingon world of Rakur, which would explain why they are searching for me. I have clearly abused the power that was given me long ago. You show great wisdom, sir, but your statement implies that you wish to change your condition. Indeed. If my mission of peace was overthrown, then I am no longer worthy of my power. Tell me, has your species made progress in the medical arts? We're a technologically advanced star. With Dr. McCoy, I sometimes wonder, but yes, I would say we have made... Yes, why do you ask? At the top of my spine is a gland not found in your species. This is the seat of my power. I wish you to remove it, thereby making me immortal. Jim, I'll try, but the physiology is completely alien. You've got to do it, Bones. If the Klingons realize he's no longer a threat to them, perhaps we can avoid a war. Scotty, four to beam up. Captain, three Klingon heavy battlecruisers have just entered the system. Admiral Kenka is hailing us, sir. Federation Starship, this is Admiral Vlick Pinker of the Cleater. You harbor a criminal who has caused the destruction of the entire population of Rakor. We are not prepared to negotiate. You will proceed to Rakor, where a court of Cleon justice will be convened. If you refuse, we shall destroy you. Admiral Vlick, the criminal of whom you speak is in the middle of a very delicate medical procedure. He cannot be handed over to anyone at this time. His attempt to corrupt the Empire with his philosophy led to the destruction of all life on Hrakor. How could a philosophy of peace and non-violence cause the destruction of all life on Hrakor? Hrakor has been governed by my family for generations, but even they were corrupted by him. It was a matter of honor that his lies had to be silenced, no matter what the cost. My God, you killed your own people just because they acquired a philosophy that you disagreed with? So you killed them, your own family. You were responsible for their deaths, not Quetzalcoatl. You murdered them. You're insane. My God, you killed your own people just because they acquired a philosophy that you disagreed with? It was that creature's fault. Had he not interfered in our affairs, the people of Rakor would be alive. Clearly, he is responsible. Message from Starfleet Command. I'll argue this with you later, Blake. Contact your superiors, Kirk. You may be surprised. I have bad news, Captain. The Organians have ruled that Quetzalcoatl's interference in Klingon affairs renders him subject to Klingon law. You are to turn your prisoner over to them at Rakur. Klingon law will permit you to observe or aid in his defense. But be very careful, Jim. Starfleet out. Captain, you cannot turn them over to those butchers. That would be murder. We have no choice, Scotty. I'm afraid Quetzalcoatl has a date with Klingon justice. Set course for Rakur, Mr. Chekhov. Captain's Law, we have come to the ruined Klingon planet of Rakur to deliver our guest, the mythical entity Quetzalcoatl, to a Klingon court. Dr. McCoy, Mr. Spock, and Ensign Benny and I have been granted permission by the Organians to witness this trial, which I expect to be a travesty of any meaningful definition of justice. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. The prisoner and his witnesses will stand forth, so the trial may begin. Save new game. Replay. So, Kirk, we finally meet. I had thought it would be in battle, but the universe holds many surprises. There's nothing less appealing than a gloating Klingon flick. Let's get this trial underway. So be it! This begins the trial of the entity Quetzalcoatl, who is charged with impersonating a Klingon, stirring dissent, encouraging cowardice, and treason in the highest degree. Those are serious charges, Flick. 
Should he not be tried by a Klingon high court? He has not demonstrated honor, Kirk. Only a proven warrior may be tried in high court. Principles of honor are not applicable to his defense. I'm a warrior, Vlicht. I hereby intervene for him and demand the honors and responsibilities of a warrior's trial. Then this trial is a mockery for the entire galaxy to see. Oh, well, I'm afraid you're on your own, Quetzalcoatl. I hereby sentence Quetzalcoatl to a coward's death. As for you, Kirk, I expected a more forceful response. I had heard you were a worthy opponent. Instead, I see a cringing coward. Leave this place, Kirk. You dishonor it. Captain, message coming in from the Clearta. My dear Captain Kirk, you will be pleased to know that your act of cowardice in returning to your ship in the middle of the trial has found a suitable reward. The traitor has been executed, and this unfortunate business has come to an end. I humbly invite you to leave Klingon space before I use your ship for target practice. All channels closed, Captain. Let us get out of here. Warp 3. Mr. Sulu, back to Federation space. We have read your report on the problems at Rakur and evaluate your performance at 41%. You and your crew received zero commendation points. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more of you than that. Try to do better on your next assignment.